Okay, so I'm going to be posting this on Piazza as well so you can get the link. So basically what you do is you start with your student ID and you put in the chapter where your question is coming from. So let's say this is your student ID and your question is coming from chapter 3. Then you write your question here. Then you have candidate answers A, B, C, D, and E. Write those there. And then tell us which one is the correct one. So let's just generate something. Hopefully your answers are more interesting just, uh, than just one. And then the correct answer, let's say, is C. Okay, and then on the last page, give an explanation about the question and the right answer and why you think it's a good question. And also add a reference. So with this reference, you can reference, uh, this is coming from chapter 4, section 3. So if someone is having trouble understanding this question, we'll have a reference that they would know which chapter and which section it is that they need to do a, a read again in order to be able to answer your question. <coughs> and at the end, you submit. Right, so this is going to be um, the deadline for doing that is going to be May 28th. However, uh, uh, that third week is going to be quite busy, so you might want to get it out of your way as soon as possible. Talk, talk questions. Question. Talk questions. So, currently this is just the first question. So, question one submission deadline, question two submission deadline, and question three and four submission deadline. Oh, it just should be one question. So, for now, it's just one question. So, you really have time to make it a really good question. Any questions? Hey, can we submit like all four questions now if we want it? Or? The reason why I'm not allowing you to do that is because I want you to have questions from all parts of uh, the course so that we don't end up with questions from the first point. Um, <coughs> any other questions? Let's get back to what we're doing. So where were we? We did an introduction to relational models, and we introduced SQL queries and compared them with what we saw before in hierarchical models, and SQL queries are a lifesaver. They're very simple to write and easy to understand. We also looked at how you can add, alter, or delete tables using SQL commands, and we started looking at integrity constraints. <coughs> How can you add a primary key to that table? How can you make something be unique in that table? And how can something reference something in another table? So how can you have a foreign key um, to make sure that the value you're adding, if it's a grade of a person, make sure that student number actually exists and you do have that student number? Let's see how we can enforce those referential integrities. Okay, so. This is the one we've talked about a few times. Consider you have students and grades. What should be done if grade tuple with a non-existent student is inserted? Well, we can just reject that. And that's not that hard. But what should we do if a student tuple is deleted? Right? So there's already grades for this student. This grade has already taken some courses. But now we want to delete that student tuple for any reason. They might be leaving the university, they don't want to end their, career, uh, end their bachelor here. So we want to delete that student. There are multiple ways that we can deal with this. One way would be to say, well, if you want to delete this person, you need to delete all their grades with it as well. Because it doesn't make sense for you to delete this person and for me to still keep their grades. Okay, so this is one way, and these are integrities that we're gonna, that the DBMS is going to enforce. So you can put that as a rule that the DBMS will automatically delete all of the grades for that student once you delete that student. That's one way. Another would be to disallow that deletion. So another way would be that 
you're going to report back saying, look, this person that you want to delete, they currently have constraints in other tables, and you cannot delete this person until these have other constraints. If you want to delete him, go and manually delete everything else that he has, all his grades, any other uh, referential integrities, then you can come back and delete this person. So it's not, so the second way is going to be disallowing that deletion. The third method would be that it's gonna allow you to delete that student and in the grade table, the idea of that person is not going to be something default. Can someone come up with an example of why this might be useful? Why would it make sense for me to delete that student, but I want to keep their grade? Alex, if you wanted to calculate the averages in a previous course. Thank you very much. That's a great reason. So if I want to keep the average for the course, although the student doesn't exist anymore, however, I want to be able to keep the average correct. So, so I can have a default value, let's say, deleted or whatever, and whoever, whichever student I delete, this is going to be what their assignment is going to look like in my grade table. You can also turn it to null. So you can say that whenever I do this, instead of having a default value, I'm going to have null as the SID for my student in my grade table. This will be problematic if your SID is part of a primary key. However, if it's not part of the primary key, then that's fine. You need to do that. Okay, so these are four different ways that you can deal with an entity being deleted uh, where there's another table where it has a foreign key in that, uh, on that student table. Any questions? Okay, so let's see what this looks like if you actually want to write this in SQL. So create table grade, we have the actual table, and we can say foreign key SID references student, and then these are the lines that we can add. We, we can say that on delete cascade, on update cascade. And these are the, the things that we talked about. Default is no action. So if you want to delete it, it's just going to reject it. It's going to say, no, you can't do that because there are integrities. Cascade would mean that you also either delete or update any tuples which are coming from other tables that are going to be affected by this deletion or update. And set null and set default either sets it to a default value or puts it as a null. So if I say on delete cascade, whenever I delete a student, all their grades will be deleted automatically. And if I say on update cascade, that means that if I change your student ID to something else, then automatically in the grade table, all their student IDs will be changed to the new value as well. On this side, if I say on delete set default, then I can come up with a default value and it's always going to replace everything with that default value. And cascade is similar to what we have here. Any questions? Right, uh, do this one on your own first, please.
right? Discuss it with your neighbors. So which way the foreign key is going, and compare it with a student in the great uh, example again. In the great example, when we took out the actual entity, which was the student, that meant we had to automatically delete the grades that we had there. Right? So think about that and uh, maybe discuss it again. Where 
Maybe uh, this is the owner of the car. Okay? So this is what the tables look like. You have a student table, which has SID name and address. You have the BMW table, which has BID and SID. And that SID is referencing the student. Now let's look at two different possibilities. What happens if you delete BMW? What if you delete this tuple? Well, there will be tears. The car is gone. But there's nothing wrong with having the student there. Right? The student stands and he'll just carry on getting his uh, degree here. If the student leaves, then since this is referencing the student table, then this tuple will also be deleted because you're doing undelete cascade. Anyone still unsure about this? So you were saying when I have in a t inside a table foreign key references another table, it means that that table that the reference is pointing, not the one well, how to explain. Simply say in this example, student pointing at BMW. In this example, BMW is pointing to the student table. Why is that? Because I want to make sure that this SID is coming from the pool of IDs that I have for my students. Okay, so foreign key SID references student, which means that this one is referencing this one. So this is the value that you need to find on the other side. Yeah, so BMW is pointing at Depends what you mean by pointing. This is the value that we need to have on the student table. So this needs to be a repetition of a student ID that you have in the student table. The other thing you can take from this is that this is the BMW table and this is where the foreign key is. The other table where there's no foreign key is the one that if you delete from, then you have to cascade and make changes to the other table. I always find it easiest if I draw out the tables and then I can see uh, what's happening better. There was another and somewhere as well. Any other questions? Okay, so A is the correct answer because A says that if you remove that SID, then this will also be deleted because you're doing on the lead cascade. And if you go back, this is the option we're going with. That if you delete uh, all, that if you delete the student, you're also deleting the grades. That first one that's cascading. question is, where do these integrity constraints come from? These constraints are based upon the real-world semantics that are describing our relationship and the scenario and the story that we were telling uh, in order to build that database to begin with. We can check a database instance to verify that, an ins that a constraint is true or not but just by checking the database, we cannot come up with the integrities. As an example, if everyone's names in, in this class are different, and if I'm just checking that table, that doesn't mean that there's a constraint which says that all names need to be unique. Okay? Because I'm only seeing one instance for a class here but for an IC to be true, it needs to be true in all possible instances that you can have. So I can look at a table and verify whether an IC is currently valid in this table or not. But just by looking at that table, I cannot understand what the ICs for that table are. So 
So where do we, so where do we uh, come up with these uh, constraints? We come up with these constraints when we're doing the conceptual design. If you think back to when we were doing the ER model, this is where we were thinking about, is this a one-to-many relationship? Is this a one-to-one -one relationship? Does this need to be participating in this relationship? So when we're designing this, we're going to come up with all the constraints, and we're going to put in the constraints in the logical uh, model so that the DBMS can enforce them. Any questions? So now let's go back and so we know databases are great and we've seen this, uh, this conceptual schema. Now let's go back to what we're doing with ER models and see how we can take an ER model and algorithmically turn it into a, a, a table. So let's start with the easiest point which we had, which were entities. These entity set could be mapped to a table. So if I have an entity movie people with a bunch of attributes, I can take that concept entity and I can have a corresponding table for that entity. So that would be create table movie people, I have ID, I have name, I have birthday, these have types, and then I have primary key, which is ID. Since the primary key is only one attribute, I could have just added primary key on this line here as well. Okay, so entities are pretty easy. Doesn't really need much thinking, there's not much choices to be made. You take it and you can have it as a table. Let's see what happens with a relationship. So a relationship like work on, if we want to get a table for that relationship, first of all, we're going to have, first of all, we're going to look at the entities. So we think now we have a, a table for movie people, and we also have a table for movies. Okay? So that's all done, that's easy, we got those in place. Now, if we want to do the work on relationship, we need to consider the entities that are in relationship, uh, that are in this relationship. So I know that movies and uh, movie people are participating in this relationship. And I need to have the idea of movie people and the idea of movies as part of the key for my work on relationship. I also need to capture this attribute role. So that role is also going to be here. So my table for work on is going to be PID, MID, role. My primary key is going to be the combination of the IDs of the other entities. And then I have two foreign keys. Foreign key from PID and also MID. Just to make sure that the movie people that I'm talking about exist, and also the movies that I'm talking about exist. Now, how do you want this table to react when you delete something from movie people or movies depends on you. We discussed four different possibilities. You can see which one of those makes sense in your movie uh, database, and then you can enforce one of those. Any questions? One thing to know that both of these are called ID. And when I want to put these back together into one table, I cannot have two different attributes having the same name. So I have to rename them, I'm renaming them to uh, PID and MID, uh, just to make sure that I have different names for my attributes. Let's see how we can translate a relationship uh, where an entity is within a relationship with itself, how can we translate that into a table? So, assume we have a table for course which has department number, department number, and title, and now we want to do a table for prereqs um, to capture this information. So let's, let's first try to uh, figure out what the key for prerequisite relationships going to be. It's going to be, so we have course uh, being in relationship with itself. 
One of the courses is going to be the actual course that we're talking about. The other is going to be the prereq course. So for 304, if you want to have a TOEFL here, the actual course is CPSC 304, and a prereq could be CPSC 221. The combination of those four values together could be your key. So the course department, the course number, the prereq department, and the prereq number, the four of those together could be a key for this table. So that's going to be my primary key, all four of these together. Now I need to make sure that the actual course that I'm talking about exists. So there is a, a, a course 304 that, I, that I'm talking about. So let's make sure that exists. So foreign key, check um, course department and course number inside my course table, just to make sure that one exists. And I also need to make sure that the prereq, the course that I'm saying is going to be a prereq for this course should also exist. So also that's going to be a foreign key uh, from prereq department and prereq number, which are some of the attributes here. Again, this is going to reference the same course. Um, no, so it doesn't have anything here. Again, here, this is, this is what the referencing would look like, the foreign key. What you want to do with that, then depends on you again. Do you want to cascade? Do you want to set it to null? Do you want to put it to update to automatically a default value? The, the four options that we talk about, you can combine those and add those to the definition of your table depending on your needs based on your database. This is a little tricky, just make sure that you understand that there are two foreign keys. One's coming from the course, we want to make sure that course exists in the course table. And there's one which is coming from the prereq part. And both of these have foreign keys that we're going to be checking inside our table. We also talked about key constraints. So with key constraints, we had cardinalities and we had one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, and many-to-many -many relationships. What if I want to show this ER diagram with tables? So I have movie people, I have a direct relationship, and I have movies, and it's the case that I want all of my movies to have a director. Now, if, if this was a many-to-many -many relationship, then we needed three different tables. We needed one for movies, we needed one, sorry, one for movie, one for movie people, and one for direct. Given that we have this constraint here, can we take advantage of that somehow? Can we reduce the number of tables? So, one suggestion is, can we reduce the number of tables? So the goal is to see whether we can take this concept, which seems to be three different tables, and can we have it as two tables instead. Let's first see a way that is not the best way to do it. So, one thing I can do is I can not consider this constraint here for now, and I'm just going to draw this similar to how I was doing it before. Right? So, similar to how I had this work on example, I'm going to say direct is going to have PID and MID coming from these two movies and movie people and movies. My primary key is going to be my MID, because movie ID is enough for me to know who the director is. And I'm going to have foreign keys both to PID and MID. But one thing I can do, which makes this easier, is that I can combine these two tables. I can combine 
the direct table with the movie table. The thing is that I only have one director per movie. So what I can do is I can add the movie ID of the director as an attribute to my movie table. Right? Since I know there's only one director, then I could have one more attribute here which says director, and that is going to be referencing an ID from the movie people. Why could I not do the same here? Why could I not say that, hey, well, I'm just going to do the same? This work on, I'm going to add this as an attribute here, and I'm going to say movies, and this, added, add, this attribute shows who's working on it. Isn't it because work on has an attribute on? No. There are too many movie, there's more than one movie people work on a movie. Exactly. Uh, can I get your name? Right. Um, so, I don't know how many people are working on this, right? Here, I know that if only I add one attribute, then I can show that director inside this movie table. With this work on, I don't know how many attributes I need to add in order to be able to capture all the people that are working on this. So the better way of doing this would to be combined direct and movie together to have one table directed movie. And that directed movie now has an attribute which is referencing the movie people, which is referencing the director, and I can add that as well into my table. So this would be the wrong way of doing it, and this would be the better way. Any questions so far? Right, well, let's go to the question. Do it on your own, please. So the name of it and the attributes that go with each of the uh, tables.
Whenever you have the required table, not the right answer, but whatever you think. Three tables. Okay, so you can do this in three rounds. First, 
figure out what tables you need, then figure out what attributes you need in each of those, then figure out what your keys are. Okay, so now let's look at this table. With this A and R, there's no attributes on my R here. These are the attributes that I have on my A. I also need to add the attributes from B to my table AR. Think back to the movie people and the movie table. If you're having one table for movie and director, you also need to take that ID from movie people and put it inside your relation so you can keep track of which B it is that you're talking about. Okay, so I would need A and D um, because they are inside this table. I would also need B because I need to know which B it is that this A is referencing. The next question would be is this B going to be part of the key or not? And it's not going to be part of the key because this A is already determining B. Once I know the movie, Avatar, I know who the director is. I don't need to make that director part of my key. So AR with attributes A, B, D, with A being the key, is my first table, which is combining these two. Any question on that? I can use a similar justification to talk about BS. I'm putting B and S together. So I definitely need the values, the attributes that are coming from B. So I need B and E here. B is determining C, so I need to keep track of the value C where it's going with this B. So that attribute C is also being added here. But again, since B determines C, C does, is not part of my key for my BS table. So again, my table is going to be having attributes B, C, and E, where B is the, the key. And finally, I have an entity C. There's nothing that I can combine C with, so I'm just going to have C on its own as it is. When you're combining tables, one thing that you need to make sure of is that you're not losing any information. So if there's an attribute up there on the ER model, you need to have that attribute somewhere inside your tables. You cannot lose any information. Okay, so that's why you need to make sure that all of those values, all those attributes are added to one of your tables here. Question, does it make sense for me to also add F into this table? Why would it be a good idea? Why would it be a bad idea? Yes? A good idea to re reduce the number of tables to two. So your idea is that if I take F and put it on the other side, it would be a good idea because then I might be able to get rid of C. Right? Uh, your name? Key. Key. So one thing you can do is you can add F to the other side um, and then you can get rid of this. What if I want to add F to this side and also keep C? So I can't, I can't get rid of C like this because in my conceptual model when I was designing this, I thought that it's important for me to have a table which is just representing C. So I'm just going to keep that. And if I keep this table C here, 
and also add f here, that would be a redundancy because now I'm keeping f twice. Note that it's not a redundancy that I'm keeping b twice, because there are some attributes that I'm keeping twice. It's not that everything is just going to be there once. I have to keep these here because I have a relationship and I need to keep track of the values which are happening inside this relationship. So this is the relations that go with the, with the ER model, so B is the right answer. Any questions? Okay, can you just press A if you're following that? And can you just press B if you want more time on this and I can cover it again? Okay, so about 80% of you are fine with this. Some of you still having trouble. Um, I add a reading to each of the sections at the beginning of each chapter. So if you're still having trouble with this, um, do read the section um, that goes with this. And if you still have problems, come and see me. Just because the majority of you are already fine with it, I am going to move on. Before I move on, let me just um, get back to this example. And I do apologize that this wasn't a good example for uh, what I was talking about. And Alice, you are right. So what I was mentioning that you have to be very careful if you make uh, if you make integrities. It might be the case that if you delete something, that is going to make recursive calls and it's going to delete a lot a lot of things. And that's that is true. This is not a good example of that problem. To have that problem, you usually would need three tables. So you have one table, the second one is referencing the first one, and then you have a third one which is referencing the second one. Right? So when you delete something from the second one, when you're deleting something from the first one, things are going to get deleted from the second table. Once you get things deleted from the second table, that's going to be carried forward to your third table. So if you have three tables, where recursively, or more, three or more, three or more tables where they're recursively re referencing each other, if you delete something from that first table, it might be the case that a bunch of stuff will get deleted. In this example, that is not going to happen. I do apologize. Any follow-ups? participation now. So the previous slide here we were talking about many to one relationships. Right? So here we're talking about if I know B, um, it's a one to many relationship that one determines the other. Here the constraint is a full participation. So we, we here we want to say that all movies need to have a director. How can I put that as a constraint inside my model? And this one would be quite easy. So if you just if you ignore the thick line, what we had before was we combined these two tables together and we had one table which was direct with movie. Now if I'm using that method, that I combine the two tables to have one directed movie table, all I need to do is to say PID cannot be null. Right? PID not null means that I have a movie, I have a movie directed movie table that is referencing the movie people and that attribute where it's referencing movie people, it cannot be null. 
When it's not null, that means that someone needs to be the director. So this is going to be an easy fix. If there's something that I want it to be fully participating, I can add that not null there, and that would get rid of the problem. Note that here I'm saying that using methods two, here we had two different methods, and if I'm using this method, it's an easy fix because I can just add a not null. It's not as easy if I'm going with this thing. Any questions? Okay, let's look at this one. So here, we were talking about uh, a participation constraint where an arrow was already inside this, uh, where we had this arrow already. So it was a many to one relationship. Let's see how we can show this, that we have a many to many relationship and we want both sides to be fully participating. All right, so, so this is gonna say we have movies and we have movie people and inside this work on relationship, we want to say that all movie people need to be working on a movie, and all movies need to have people working on it right now. That's what I want to say. I can't do this with a for, I can't, I can't add a null null somewhere to make this work, because now I have a many to many relationship, and there's nothing that I can refer to as my null to add a null null for an attribute. And I can't show this with foreign keys neither. And in fact, with what, we, with what you know so far, there's no way we can say that. Which is unfortunately deeply unsatisfying. But with what we know so far, you cannot add such a restriction to your work on relation. Assertions are rules that we can add to the database and we can have them and the DBMS will check those whenever something is being added or deleted just to make sure all of those are correct. And we're going to talk about those later. Any questions? Why can we not combine these two? Yes, in the one table and we have a primary ID as an ID, a uh, movie people ID and a movies ID. So the question is, why can we not combine these two together and then have the ID of the movie people on this side as well, right? Yeah. Is that a suggestion? So this is something that we talked about before as well, was that with a director relationship, we could do that because there was only one director per movie. So if I added an attribute on the movie side, then that attribute could, could uh, keep the ID of the director. But work on, I don't know how many people are working on this movie. So if I just add an attribute on movie, that's not gonna get, that's not gonna resolve the problem. No, my idea was to just have one table in work on, uh -huh. which would have both attributes of movie people and movies. Roles. Oh, okay. So the the other suggestion is that let's just have one table, right? So in that table we have movie people, we have role, and we have movie, and we keep. And what would be um, the keys? The key will be ID of the movie. ID of the movie and ID of the movie people, right? That's a great question. Discuss it with your neighbors for a few seconds and we'll talk about it together. Discuss whether this is a good idea. If it's not a good idea, why is it a bad idea? 
about Samuel L. Jackson, you change his address to something else, and then some of them have his previous address. Okay. So consistency and keeping everything consistent, where you have multiple copies of the same information is very hard. Any questions? Larissa, does that answer your question? Does that answer your question? I'm still thinking. Yeah, redundancy. There is a redundancy, but you can't take benefit of that redundancy. Not really. So right now, there's a problem that we can't say that, but we're going to overcome that in some other way. So at the end, there's nothing that you can do better like this that you can't do when you take everything and have multiple tables. And you can see, and you'll see that redundancy is really a big problem. Because of all the... Um, oh, so your table can grow. That's one of them. The other is just that consistency is, is a mess. You cannot keep everything consistent. And you know, here we only have three attributes. Realistically, if you want to keep information about movie people, you have about 45. <coughs> okay, so let's talk about weak entities. So again, what we're doing is, we've already discussed each of these and why they're important. Now we're taking each of these notions and we're trying to translate them into a relation so we can have tables that go with our model. Okay, so weak entity was identified by considering the primary key of another strong entity. T 
together with the primary key of the actual week entity. So we have movie people, we have insurance that covers their dependents, and the combination of the dependent's name and the movie person ID is going to be the key that goes for that, uh, for that dependent and this table. What is the best way to translate this? So this is <coughs> close to what a one-to-many relationship looks like. With that, we had these two and we combine these two together. We can do the same, we can combine these. The main difference is that before, we didn't need the key of the, the other entity because the key of this on its own would be enough to determine the movie people if it was a strong entity. Here the difference is going to be that we combine these two tables, so the relationship and the entity, we combine it. But the primary key is also going to be the ID of the strong entity. Okay, so that table is going to have attributes of P name, ID, cost, and age, and attributes ID and P name together are going to be the primary key. And then the foreign key is going to say that this ID that now we have that we're adding in this table is referring to the ID of our movie people. Again, it doesn't make sense for me to be covered by an insurance of a movie person where that movie person doesn't exist. So that's why we have that reference there as well. Any questions? Let's do a quicker question. Just click whenever you're done and then I'll give you the different answers.
Any questions? I know that we're covering some of these uh, concepts pretty quickly. I'm going to have one big example and all of the stuff that we're doing uh, just to recap everything uh, in the next part of the lecture. Right, so let's take a quick break. Uh, let's resume at half time.